Okay. Okay. Good day, everyone. Um, can I Hello, ask for everyone to mute uh, your your mics? Please don't unmute because um, there will be background noise and everyone can hear. So while the speaker is talking, it will be very disruptive also. So seek your kind cooperation, please. Okay. So good morning, uh, well, most welcome to everyone and thank you for joining us online for today's talk on TCM and its users and oncology's perspective by Dr. Chubok Ai. Um, today's talk is organized by Singapore Cancer Society along with participating organizers, Breast Cancer Foundation and Iron Society. Um, I'm very honored to host this webinar with attendees from the three organizations and of course the invited guests by Dr. Chu. So before we begin, uh, please allow me to go through the ground rules again. All right. So this online talk will only be recorded throughout. Um, will be recorded throughout. Sorry. And hence, uh, during the session, please turn off your video if you do not want your face to be shown in the recording. So please note that the talk will be about an hour or so, and uh, we will leave time uh, for Q&A at the end, approximately 15 minutes to 30 minutes, depending on the, on the participation as well. Um, please use the chat function to post your questions anytime during the session. Um, Dr. Chu will be addressing them during the Q&A, okay? So as I've mentioned earlier, um, your microphone should be muted at all times, and uh, please do not unmute your mics uh, as the background noise can be heard and it will be disruptive to the session. Okay. okay. And last but not least, there will be a feedback form that requires all of your participation um, at the end of the talk. So please give us your thoughts, your suggestions, if any, and to help us improve future sessions, okay? So, without further ado, let us welcome Dr. Chu. Dr. Chu, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction. Uh, today, I'm going to give a talk on TCM. TCM is not my, uh, as, of course, I am an oncologist. I'm not a TCM physician. So, I have actually uh, a, a few TCM physicians have actually logged in. So, during the uh, later, you probably will be able to uh, hopefully uh, help me in the Q and A answer. Everyone can see can see my slides, right? Yes. You can see my slides. Okay, very good. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about uh, TCM from an uh, oncologist perspective, and I'm not a TCM physician. So the purpose of this talk is for general education only, and does not equate a consultation or recommendation of the products discussed. And please consult your own doctors if you want any further information. And important, please do not self-medicate uh, based on what I've said, okay? So I've uh, worked in NUH and Tantoxing before, and I just come up in the prior practice for the past two years. I've been doing volunteer uh, work uh, uh, talks in Singapore Cancer Society, Breast Cancer Foundation before as well. And this is just my short CV. Now, the headlines at the moment is that uh, these are just coming from Straits Times. The two studies have shown that the use of alternative medicine actually delays early treatment of disease. And part of it is because people are using complementary and alternative medicine, including TCM, as, uh, as a primary treatment. So cancer patients often explore alternatives such as TCM and homeopathy because they think that these herbs and vitamins that can strengthen the immunity or fight the cancer. So it's a common belief, uh, although the belief is uh, is sometimes correct, but if you use it as a primary treatment, unfortunately, often medicine, the efficacy and the effectiveness is actually on the lower side. I'll show you uh, some of the studies. Now, in these studies in, in NUH itself, we did a survey on 240 cancer patients currently in NU, last time was in NUH. Uh, these surveys were done a few years ago. Uh, most of them are breast, colorectal, and lung cancer in the more advanced stage, and 20% were using alternative oral medicine while on chemotherapy, and the most common were vitamin supplements, 40%, and 
one third of the patient actually on TCM while on chemotherapy. Now the reason is because they, the patients wanted to have to cure the cancer and do more to fight uh, the cancer and also to help boost the immunity and improve their well-being. So these are the reasons why people choose TCM while being diagnosed with cancer and during treatment as well. Now, the danger is that the studies have shown that some health can actually reduce the effectiveness of the chemotherapy treatment and also can increase the side effects of chemotherapy. And some herbs are like drugs and can cause side effects because taking high doses, they're actually like a drug itself. So as an example, a ginseng can actually can reduce effectiveness on some chemotherapy and shouldn't be combined together while the patient is on chemotherapy. And taken an excessive amount, and ginseng can cause headaches and high blood pressure and worsen indigestion. So most of the time, do not self-medicate and consult a proper TCM physician and let your doctors know. Uh, but the main reason why TCM is harmful is not because of TCM. It's because there's a delay of the use of Western medicine while itself can be curable and more effective. And that is the danger, not because of TCM is dangerous, but because people choose TCM as their primary uh, treatment of choice only and did not go for the proper Western medicine treatment. So in this study, it's also in the America, it showed that there's higher risk of dying uh, from cancer if you use alternative cancer uh, therapy alone. And the risk of dying is two and a half times higher than compared to the conventional or Western medicine. So this is just a, a study, this is quite recently, the last few years uh, in, in Yale University uh, in America. So there must be a better solution. So I graduated from the UK and when I first came back more than 11 years ago, so in UK there's no TCM, very few TCM or alternative medicine use. Most of them were taking vitamin supplements. So I thought there must be a, a better solution because anxiety among cancer patients are, are, are real and are very high. So of course, if I'm diagnosed with cancer today, I will do whatever I can to reduce the risk of it recurring and increase the chance of a cure. So it's important actually to take some advice, uh, not from lay person, but actually to listen to your doctor. So rather than saying no to alternative medicine, that's why some of the oncologists, most of the oncologists will say, say don't combine, don't do anything, just go for Western medicine, just ignore TCM because TCM is ineffective. So I um, somewhat disagree with the options uh, of, of view. So I think there must be a better way. The better way is that through education, uh, to educate, you know, let's say I'm giving this talk and, and for that reason, I'm going to also hold a lot of uh, what I call a masterclass cancer webinar. I want to use education to educate people what can be done, what cannot be done and through proper counselling on the side effect of the management. A lot of people take TCM because they are worried that the conventional treatment like say chemotherapy and radiotherapy, they will suffer from the side effect and they want to use TCM to counteract the side effect. But the fact is that there are a lot of other ways to counteract the side effect of chemotherapy. Let's say chemotherapy causes nausea and vomiting. There are a lot of good anti-nauseous medication that is also uh, available and the oncologist can prescribe you that. So actually, we are quite experienced in managing uh, treatment-related uh, side effects. And the other thing is that cancer survival story is important because a lot of cancer uh, patients actually survive their cancer and able to step, tell their stories. Those, those who undergo chemotherapy, some of you are, have had it before and some of you are currently on it. And actually, there are a lot of success stories as well. And the partnership between Western doctors and TCM can optimize treatment outcome because I always see my TCM physician as my partner in helping patients because we have the same uh, motive and care that we want to do the best for our patient. So if we can do partnership and do a joint care, it will be better than saying no to each other. So this is what I think is a better solution. And because of that, I also uh, become a lecturer in the NTU uh, Chinese medicine branch. So I give lectures uh, uh, just once a year to the TCM uh, Chinese medicine uh, clinic there. Now the TCM uh, training now in Singapore has greatly different. Now they have to have a double uh, qualification degree. So they start off with the Bachelor of Medical Science uh, and graduate with a degree first, an English degree in, in NTU. And after that, they have to do a, a master course another four to five years and usually uh, in some example in Beijing and do an external program. So they actually dual qualified. Uh, this is actually quite impressive because they are now English speaking as well and they will understand physiology and anatomy. Uh, so the, this is my lung cancer talk and the breast cancer talk.
Wishing to see you again. Okay, we'll talk for her. So, uh, okay. And the rising burden of cancer that there are 18 million new cancer uh, per year now and with 9.6 million deaths. Now, put it in perspective now. So, there's 18 new cancer diagnoses around the world and 9.6 million deaths. So, the death rate is 53% due to cancer. Now, at the moment, there are 22 million new COVID. So, COVID now this year has su surpasses cancer incidence in the world but they only cost 800,000 deaths. And that is a death rate of 3.6%. So you can see cancer is actually a bit a more scary uh, uh, condition compared to COVID. And there are multiple books now on TCM. So what is TCM? The TCM have uh, many, uh, what we call uh, English written book. And I actually read some of those books. And this is why I'm giving this talk. I have to go and do some readings myself. And has been assistant for use for 2,500 years, and these are a few methods of TCM, herbal acupuncture, Twina, Qigong, dietary. I'm just going to go to some of these uh, five important elements, but I'm not going to go through bloodletting, moxibuction, because there's no time and croissant. So mainly TCM used for cancer is based on herbal and also acupuncture, and some Twina and Qigong for uh, self-cultivation, and also dietary advice. So this actually uh, com comprise the majority of what we consider TCM, the first five things here. Yeah. So TCM should not be confused with some religious and cultural superstition uh, when they say you cannot take this and take that. Some of them are due to cultural superstition. So integrating conventional and Chinese medicine in the cancer care is actually uh, usually done in, in China uh, because you really need to be uh, educated in Chinese to do TCM properly because a lot of the medicine are all have Chinese name in it and a lot of the books written on TCM are all in Chinese. So the principle of TCM in cancer, there are basically three. is to strengthen one's own immunity and to help relieve some of the symptoms due to the imbalance and yin and yang and to maintain quality of life. Now the principle of TCM uh, based on one thing is actually uh, three things, the qi, the blood and the clear fluid, uh, body fluid balance. So within itself, there is a meridian lines that act as a transport of qi and interconnecting uh, organs. And there's a solid and hollow organs uh, as defined by TCM. And of all the organs, there's a brain, marrow, uterus, muscle, skin, bones, and, and the mind itself. So these are the principles of how TCM works, very different from conventional uh, uh, Western medicine where we define an organ as what we can see, let's say the head, the brain, but this one uses uh, a bit of what we call a functional organs and define it quite differently. And the qi as a substance cannot be measured, uh, but it's been uh, the, the main, uh, what we call the main principle of TCM, that the qi must be able to flow well. If you, there's a block of stagnation of qi, that actually causes illness of health. So as such, acupuncture sometimes can improve the flow of the qi and people get relief from acupuncture and some of the uh, herbal medicine can actually help with the stagnation and a twina massage can also improve that. So qi is a defensive mechanism against ill health because it also helps to boost immunity. So what is qi then? Qi is born, everyone is born with a certain amount of qi called a yuan qi. Now qi itself uh, has with nutrition and care as you grow up the qi actually improves with time as you grow older. So there is a zhen qi, zhong qi, yin qi, and wei qi. So this depends on the different elements of the body. So a zhong qi, let's say it's installed in your lung, so it actually affects how, how good is your lung when you're breathing, when you're speaking, when you're singing. So this, this as I said, is quite different from how Western medicine will define it, but this is how they define it as, as, as a qi. Now the other thing that's important because the blood flows inside our body, blood carries this qi around. So a normal blood circulation is very important to circulate this qi, and this qi eventually uh, will actually affect other bodily fluids that's excreted as tears, saliva, and sweat. Now the meridians have twelve uh, channels and eight vessels, and uh, these are twelve main channels. Each channel associated with one organ, and these vessels are uh, smaller parts. It's called uh, du mai, ren mai, chong mai, and the you, example of that is important because the acupuncture on this point, uh, uh, Wei, is related, you know, to the spleen and the stomach then head digestion. So these are all related in, in the meridians uh, when they actually, uh, the TCM, uh, how the TCM treat, treat patients. Quite different from, you know, they don't use a stethoscope to listen, but they look at uh, different parts of the organ and what 
uh, externally. I'll show you a bit of the tongue, and, and sometimes they look at the tongue mai, you know, using your pulse and to define whether how good is your health. Okay, so the solid and hollow organs, you know, they are the main organs are the liver, the heart, the spleen, the lung, and kidney. So these all major organs must be uh, what we call in dynamics and, and, and well and to define. So if there's uh, you feel unwell, it's because of this. Uh, solid organs that is uh, imbalanced and they, 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 where they store the qi. So it's important to actually uh, maintain and give medicine to improve this qi back. So the preparation of the herbs, if those of you have taken TCM before, is, is, is actually is to boil uh, the, the traditional TCM, how it works, that you should actually have a medicine that you boil for 45 minutes with high heat and then and then uh, slow it down to moderate heat and then to make one bowl or, or, or of a soup. Then you boil again for 30 to 45 minutes again for the second bowl and reduce it down further. And you mix the two bowls together and put it into two serving and drink within one day. And you consume on an empty stomach to improve the absorption uh, and should not mix with Western medicine when you take it. And, and this is actually uh, how you should take a, a TCM. But now TCM, to make it more convenient, uh, a lot of them are available in tablet and capsules form mostly in capsule swamps and they put in all this medicine. But this is how the traditional TCM should be taken. So the diagnosis of disease is not specific to a proper name, but a lack of biomechanical uh, mechanism of disease. So it depends on the yin and yang and the five elements and balance of this entity. And that's why the pulse, the skin, the eye and the tongue and other bodily function is a mirror of the health within itself. And we, the aim is to regulate rather than to treat a disease or diagnosis. So once you regulate the body's uh, balance, then whatever disease you have should actually uh, counteract, be a counteract. So actually TCM treats a syndrome and don't treat a condition or disease or diagnosis. So again, it's actually quite different from how Western medicine will have, uh, will have seen this as an illness. Now the yin and yang uh, balance is yang is a dry and hot and the symptoms that you feel heaty, you are sweating and a fever, dry mouth, dark urine and fast pulse. Whereas the yin is the cold and dampness, and you have a cold, white complexion, pale, have diarrhea, and large tongue, and, and a weak pulse. So this yin and yang theory, I've been educated when I was very young. That's what my grandmother would have teach me. You know, today you have heat, you know, that's why you do take yang sui, you know. And But when I went to UK, when you have talked to my you know professor, why is this yin and yang? I don't understand it at all. They have no idea what it is because for them, it doesn't matter. You have a fever, you know, you just take Panadol. If you feel cold, you just wear another blanket, you know, and take warm water or no, better still go and take some whiskey, you know, and warm yourself because I graduated from Aberdeen in Scotland and it's very, very cold there. And so the, the Scottish like to drink a lot of whiskey and, and try to warm their body. But I still think that this principle is actually quite good to define it because we do feel cold and hot at some time and we do need to balance this part. If you do extreme cold or extreme hot, you will feel unwell. So this balance actually quite, quite useful, uh, uh, I think, to adhere uh, to. And the cancer management, uh, some of the things I took is from this book. If you want to take a uh, copy of this book. So Hong Hai uh, is a currently practicing TCM uh, in, in, in Singapore. He written quite a lot of books. And uh, Yu Ren Chung is a Beijing hospital. He's actually quite famous. Uh, previously have come to Singapore before for consultation. Uh, quite a famous uh, TCM oncologist in, 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 in Beijing. So the modern TCM now has slightly a bit different uh, how we classify as modern because let's say for, for this uh, turmeric as antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, uh, we know that turmeric is quite a strong antioxidant and now we, we also think that turmeric probably have an, have an anti-cancer element in it and some people take turmeric uh, as, as, as a health supplement. Now, many years back uh, when there is a malaria, so... Uh, TCM has been used to treat malaria many years ago. It's been documented back, you know, in 1596 that uh, a herb, uh, a tea called Qinghao tea, right, can actually help help in malaria. And finally, many years uh, back in 1972, many years back, few hundred years later, and then somebody actually discovered the active compound in this tea, and it's called artemisinin. And because of this work and this person, uh, Yo Yo, Tu Yo Yo, actually won the Nobel Prize back in 2015 for discovery. And this was a TCM for, uh, for many years. So we do know that some herbal uh, medicine inside a TCM is actually, uh, actually a drug. 
that sometimes we do not know, uh, have not refined it. So what is the active compound in it? So hopefully most of the time, eventually as science become better, we will manage to actually extract what is the actual thing that work in TCM uh, itself. So arsenic has been used also to treat acute leukemia and, and, and we have to able to isolate what is actually a, a effective, uh, what we call the active compound. Now, the very common TCM, some TCM use uh, a certain medicine to treat a lot of conditions. Let's say this is a pian si huang, you know, it can actually treat multiple, uh, claim to treat multiple cancer, liver damage, stroke, reduce inflammation, remove heat, reduce toxin. So this is uh, a commonly a uh, wide aspect of claim because as you say that TCM treat the symptoms so when you treat the symptoms of cancer, liver, and stroke, so actually when you remove the symptoms, as if you're treating the disease itself, because it's by reducing inflammation and removing the internal heat caused by this uh, condition. So the Western medicine will put a diagnosis on it, but the TCM look at it as a symptoms. And this medicine has been uh, uh, so uh, quite commonly, let's say in Yuan Sang, but the, the problem is that sometimes they are not good quality research. Sometimes we know some medicine works, but we do not know why it's an active compound. And because it's uh, quite challenging to do clinical research in the sense that a TCM expect. So a lot of times what Western doctors get a bit confused because they say, what is your evidence? You have not found a way to do a proper clinical research to address the issue whether it is a, effectively a proper drug or is it a placebo effect? And some of them, they do not define what is the clinical outcome to, to get it just by symptoms relief. But I say how much reduction, what are the actual symptoms that you are trying to relieve and how many percentage drop that you're going to get. So that is why a bit difficult uh, for the Western medicine uh, doctors to quit, uh, to understand that because of that. I'll show some of the publication that the people have now during this last you know, 20, 30 years have improved quite a bit as people become more westernized in their thinking and there's a TCM uh, in, in China has actually improved quite a lot in, in their research. And so go back to this uh, uh, Pian Zi Wang, you know, it's in, done in the Ming Dynasty. So, you know, 500, you know, a very, very long time ago, a few hundred years ago, have been used to treat many, it's still available on the market. And uh, so, uh, example here, I just Google it and then so by you and some of this price. So a few hundred years ago, definitely more older than any of the chemotherapy drugs that you ever were seen yet because the, the earliest chemotherapy drug was by a master uh, gas and that only discovered in 1940s, in 1930-something, you know. So these are uh, much more long history. Now, if you look at whether there's any research that is usually in the laboratory and most of the research are done in China. So this in this uh, report, uh, just published 2012, uh, this patient one seems to be able to inhibit the proliferation of, of human colon cancer cells. But these are laboratory studies. So laboratory become what we call the earliest phase studies of whether to see whether any cancer activity is available. So people are doing more of this research. But the problem is that some of this research does not translate into humans. So you need to have a human research to see that definitely it will work. But we are quite encouraged that actually people are now looking back into going back to the basic laboratory first and then going to animal study and going to human study just to investigate whether whether uh, this TCM actually works and looking at specific uh, reason why they work because we have to find a physiology, explain it clinically and scientifically. So the description on the box that can do all these things, you know, stop bleeding, ease pain, some of them may have a bit of very weak steroid effect and because reducing inflammation and because steroid also can reduce inflammation. So these are sometimes about, but the government actually look at this steroid content quite quite uh, carefully. So now we are more regulated, which is actually good because some of the drugs you buy on the market, on the black market, there are actually a lot of mixture of different drugs. So the danger of some it, this irregular TCN because it can have heavy metal in it, it can have arsenic, lead and mercury and candium and taken in high concentration can be actually quite toxic. And there's also fungal toxin itself, uh, aflatoxin can actually can cause liver cancer if you use a lot of dry products because a lot of the TCM also very using very, very dry products. And sometimes this fungal toxin can accumulate and grow on this. You do not wash it carefully, you actually be taking some of this toxin along uh, with, with these drugs. And some of them can mix a bit of steroid, phenytoin, and clopancamide, which is an anti-diabetic medicine. That's why sometimes if you take this TCM on the black market, you can find your blood sugar drop and people can get, get collapsed and go into a coma. And it has been documented before 
that this uh, illicit drug use. Uh, so you have to be very careful, but make sure that you go and see a proper TCM physician who actually do some QA and quality analysis, and, and they actually have more experience in doing that. So try not to self-medicate. Okay, so this is Ling Zi. And Ling Zi in uh, 2015 Cochrane Overview has shown that it can actually have an adjunct to enhance tumor response and stimulate a uh, host immunity. So Ling Zi is very commonly used in a, in a TCM. Now how the TCM actually works is that, uh, for example, I give you this. Now this slide uh, is a courtesy from Oriental Remedies uh, uh, physician Liang Weijing. She's actually inside uh, this group and will help me help try to answer some of the questions if you do have any questions later. Because I said I'm not a proper TCM and it's good to have some TCM physician inside these chat, chat rooms so that it can help me uh, answer some of the questions. So like Huang, uh, Huang Qi, uh, Ling Zi, and, and it did, uh, among uh, the doses, it's also remember the TCM usually is in a smaller dose, yeah? so you do not do not take beyond usually what we call in grams. Yeah? You cannot take loads of it because actually you take high concentration, it's actually quite dangerous. So it acts uh, like this TCM will, will act as a as uh, uh, in these studies, again, has shown that Ling Zi has a broad spectrum application and regulates the immune system. Uh, these are become more scientific now, and you can see that this reishi mushroom, according to the scientific name, uh, people have been doing uh, more research. This is, this is also Australian research as well. So even the Western doctors have now wanted to study and, and what is the active compound in TCM. And then Huang Zi has been also used uh, to research in anti-cancer, but most of these uh, anti-cancer properties are all in the laboratory study and this is the first phase but very little we do not know how if equally effective in the big studies like in, so in, in let's say you have a chemotherapy study usually the chemotherapy study we actually recruit few hundred patients you know to prove to to say that this drug is effective we give a placebo to a group of patients that means no active compound and then give another group active compound and then because of that uh, we can show a, a difference so, so again, this needs to be uh, validated and actually used in TCM uh, as well, just to, to see whether it actually improve. Now, when you're managing the side effect of, of chemotherapy or radiation, and these are the things that you achieve to clear the heat, because most of the chemotherapy and radiotherapy cause what we call a, a, a heaty, you know? And so you want to clear the heat and replenish the fluid and dryness. And this, these are Shen Di Huang, Xiao Gu Cai, Xiao Gu Cao, uh, actually helps to, to do that. Uh, so how it works also have a bit of a uh, effect on the scientific bit uh, again and it actually increased the uh, activating the natural killer cells in the body and some of them actually helps in the what we call xerostomia which actually if you have a nose cancer and NPC you find that your dry mouth uh, because of lack of saliva and this drug uh, actually can help in, in the dryness of the of the mouth and using a, a, a review study just to see how effective it is. Okay, so these are just uh, some of the few examples. And some herbs are actually can help with the loss of appetite and other digestion issues uh, caused by, uh, uh, issue, uh, faced by the cancer patients as well. Now, a lot of times we eat soup, yeah? So when you boil soup, you have a base, which is actually your meat and bones. And after that, you put Chinese medicine uh, herbs in it. And after that, it also something to stimulate your appetite. So a Chinese herbal soup, helps in bu, bu qi, you know, to help your, uh, not only give you protein, but actually uh, take away the heat and also as an appetite stimulant. So this is very common. I also take it as well as part of my you know, Chinese uh, chicken herbal soup. So uh, this, this soup is actually quite uh, nourishing uh, to, to the body. Uh, I'm not sure how, whether you can consider that as, as a TCM. To me, this is not TCM as much. This is really a Chinese herbal soup, you know, for, it's a, it's a nutrition supplement. And more so. So if you think this kind of remedy can cure cancer, of course you know that it can. It treats the symptoms, improve every time, give you more energy, but it doesn't actually, you know, kill the cancer and control the cancer. So you must understand that in the sense that if you know this, then my advice always to use Western medicine as a base of your treatment and use TCM as, as a supplement and to help your symptoms and that's actually quite quite important to, to know where where to draw the line and and, and we talked about this before uh, so when you actually see the interaction between TCM and Western medicine why you know, most of us will not recommend doing concurrently if you want to do concurrently you must use a low dose 
and uh, minor grade, so you cannot use all TCM with chemotherapy because there are a lot of interaction where we do not understand. When there we do understand is that some people will get very severe interaction and, and could be quite severe and can cause uh, uh, liver and kidney damage uh, used appropriately. Now, if you do want to use it together, you must make sure there's a two to three hours apart. And because some of the drugs have long half-life and shouldn't mix together when you consume. And if you're on aspirin and warfarin, uh, some of the TCM can actually affect the, the, the warfarin level. So you also must make sure that, that, that any Western medicine you take, it can actually increase or reduce the effectiveness of it. And some of the TCM taken in higher concentration can actually cause toxicity. And you can see the this, this drug called Sisiang uh, can actually cause uh, abortion. And some of them can cause a uh, blood stagnation and swollen uh, uh, ankles. And American cheesing can cause cooling and cause worsen indigestion. And uh, as I said, excessive uh, use of some TCM can actually cause some side effect. Now, go to the acupuncture. Acupuncture have two main roles. Number one, that it can actually improve nausea and vomiting due to chemotherapy and actually improve pain control. Now, in these multiple studies, it shows that acupuncture hits in cancer support to relieve discomfort or conventional. Uh, this conventional, sometimes you can see in this first one, is the, you say that comparison to Andesetron, which is an anti-nausea uh, medication, uh, actually it improved the effectiveness of the anti-nausea medication. And sometimes you can use uh, to hot in the health hot flushes in breast cancer because they're taking some hormonal treatment can cause hot flushes. Let's say for tamoxifen, letrozole, aromacine can sometimes cause a postmenopausal symptoms and, and acupuncture has been shown to have a little bit of help. And, and sometimes it also helps the pain and actually because it helps with the, with the nerve sensation and release of endorphins. And it also can use to help uh, cancer fatigue, menopausal symptoms and, and nerve damage and sometimes can also be used in stroke patients as well. So acupuncture has been more uh, recognized in the mainline uh, Western medicine line. Some of the doctors, in Western doctors, uh, neurologists, has been trained to use acupuncture to stimulate nerve due to stroke. So uh, acupuncture has more uh, value uh, uh, now uh, in the Western uh, hospital setting. And if you look at how Chinese diagnose disease, these are all the mind, you know, you cannot, so these are fu mai, ho mai, ke mai, Ru mai, san mai, you know, these are all when you actually, when the Chinese TCM fill your pulse, these are probably, you know, a lot of pulse difference, you know, you need to be very experienced to diagnose a condition based on this uh, pulse. For me, pulse is just to measure the pulse rate, how fast your heart is beating, but uh, TCM will able to, depends on your weakness and the strength and the rhythm and, and see whether you have any condition. So they actually define in very detail how your pulse can show the inner uh, inner health. And if you look at your tongue, uh, this is like say ideal tongue, and uh, this is uh, when you have weakened immunity, your tongue will be different and you have a blood stagnant, uh, a poor stag uh, immunity, your blood becomes static, so your tongue also becomes discolored. Mostly, most of the time I see tongue is because the patient have fungal thrush uh, on their tongue and because the immunity is low, you get gut fungal infection. This fungal infection can actually cultivate and so, so sometimes I do look at the tongue and to see whether there are higher risk of infection because of fungal infection. I'll give you some, a case report uh, mentioned in the, in the book uh, uh, published by Ron Hai, uh, uh, Cancer Management with, his, uh, with Chinese Medicine, uh, page 89. So it details the case report of a 46-year-old female with a stage 4 non-small cell lung cancer have underwent a treatment to the brain and as well started on IRISA with an EGFR inhibitor with some good response. Now this patient choose to uh, see a TCM uh, uh, with this diagnosis. So when the, the female patient went to see a TCM, there's a few symptoms and conditions. She has dryness of the throat, and she's not eating and sleeping well, uh, otherwise uh, quite, quite okay itself. Because of lung cancer, there's a mid chest and difficult in coughing up uh, because of the lung cancer. Now, when the TCM physician examined that the, 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 the tongue is actually dark red with a thin fur, so the pulse is actually deep and cracky and actually quite weak as well. So actually the qi is actually reduced and then and there's a yuan mai. Okay. So the diagnosis based on the syndrome is that the qi is deficient, you know, because of that, uh, uh, because of the cancer and also because of the treatment and the patient is not eating and sleeping well. And, and the yin is actually deficient. Uh, and, and the uh, phlegm is there because 
yes. and there's a toxin accumulation as well okay, because of the of the accumulation in the tongue can see it on. so how you reverse this process is actually to have all these medicines so gcm is always a mixture of 10 to 12 or in this case a lot you know this up to 20 20 uh, herbs given together in small amount in a combination to enhance each other effect. So usually done in the grams, can be 10 grams, 3 grams, 10 grams, 20 grams. So all in a small amount. So it's not like a Panadol. When you actually take this, the Panadol is an active compound and that's it, you know. But TCM is always a mixture of herbs to enhance each other and treat multiple symptoms. And that's why it's very difficult to do clinical trials in TCM because no, any of these drugs can be the active compound, you know. But because you mix it together, we do not know. So every two weeks, the TCM physician would decide to change this uh, herbal uh, concoction because of the difference in, in, in the patient. So rather than you have chemotherapy, you've got one fixed chemotherapy for four to six cycles over a few months, it's only one drop. This is actually multiple medicine, herbal medicine, given and changed every two weeks. And that's why it's very difficult to do, say that, to do which drug actually a uh, herbal actually works in this patient because the condition changes most of the time. And this is the reason why clinical studies in TCM is very difficult because of this multiple different concoction over a short period of time every two weeks and to know which is actually the effect of the active compound. And because they are treating the symptoms uh, which change every two weeks rather than treating the diagnosis and the condition. So a second visit three months later, then the condition changes and the, the, the drugs also changes. But you can see that the, uh, some of the condition of dark drum pulse actually con continue on and the, the patient is sleeping and, and eating a bit better now. So uh, then a third week, we see six weeks later, uh, the condition uh, changes. So these are very well documented symptoms control and looking at that uh, and try to use herbs to moderate and treat the symptoms. So you can see a TCM actually is treating the symptoms, building the immunity, helping the chi. So it's actually quite different from treating the cancer. And 20 months, once one later, now the patient uh, has been actually survived uh, because of the ERISA uh, and, and rate, despite having brain metastasis in the brain, the patient's still alive and well, eating and sleeping well. So this TCM has been used to supplement and treat the condition to improve quality of life. And, but it really is the ERISA that is a building block of it. But of course, if you improve your immunity, immunity plays a huge part in the patient's ability to cope with cancer. And, and, and against the cancer as well. So I think the two works quite well uh, as one, one, one reason. And, but in this patient, uh, it's very fortunate because the TCM does not seem to affect the iris. Huh? Because you see these are so many medications, right? So is there any publication to say all these medications can mix with iris, huh? which is the main line of the Western medicine? The answer is that we do not know. And not enough studies have been done to see how this drug and drug interaction are able to but I say that's why a TCM physician experience is very important as well because they know what to mix and what not to mix. And if you really cannot go and get this medicine, right, and then copy this and say go to a Yao Chai Tian, you know, a TCM shop, and then I want all this and take yourself, please do not self-medicate because a TCM physician is very important uh, to able to look after you. And if you look at all this, how to replenish qi and nourish the yin, so these are the medicine that may help, you know, um, and then if you want to remove phlegm, uh, masses, and these are the medicine. So if you get a home kind book and speak to your own TCM, these are the compound that are actually, uh, they, they know all these uh, uh, medicine that help. So I have to learn it from scratch as well. Um, and there are multiple things that they can do to calm the wind, to promote blood circulation, to help improve uh, your blood and also clear the skin because the uh, iris can cause a skin rash. So sometimes you have to use some of the herbs to modulate and help the skin effect. So when you look at TCM and well-being, the most of the part that they've done much better than Western medicine is that they look at your diet as well, very what you can eat and what you cannot eat. Uh, and they also recommend you to do some gentle exercises and actually to cultivate your mind and your spirit because you need to have a healthy mind. And they ask you to to do uh, you know uh, some some mindfulness kind of kind kind of thing. Uh, and so qigong, although there's not TCM, become part of the exercise and cultivate the mindfulness as well. So this is this is one of the aspects that of TCM that's not many people have spoken about, thinking it's just a herbs and acupuncture, but it's actually a holistic way of looking at things. So when you look at dietitian diet and nutrition, there are a lot of free radicals that cause oxidative damage, and the diet rich in plant and grain and low in animal products, and some of the avoidance of what 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 to eat. Uh, 
and become one of the studies and what TCM used to do. And some of the things that we eat actually are a lot of them are carcinogenic, say, say a barbecue food, and some of them are a lot of pesticide and food additive as well. So we have to be a bit careful. And what is good for the body is to always be a plant-based and high antioxidant food such as uh, broccoli, tomato, garlic, and berries, and grape. These are these are have restro inside, uh, and leucopenes inside, and these are also known to be high antioxidants. So a normal a plant-based diet, uh, this is not TCM anymore, but this is a Western diet kind of a, of of, of a, uh, nutrition and advice. Now, when you have to see a TCM, they will ask you to look at things you cannot eat and eat, and they also can give you uh, uh, some herbs to actually improve your appetite. Uh, and reduce your bloatedness and, and, and improve your gut health. And with the nutrition that you have, you actually can improve your immune system and you can better cope with the side effects of treatment and improve the energy. So the TCM perspective is that try to avoid moldy, dry, deep dry food, high sugar content and barbecue food because these are all not good for you. So and the spin and stomach which is involved in the digestion uh, and taking herbs to protect the stomach and spleen so that you can eat a bit better and better absorb in the food. Now, when you look at how TCM see it, it there are five flavors and four natures. So these are the five flavors of the pungent, the sweet, sour, bitter, and saltiness. And the nature is that you can cold, hot, warm, and cold food. And patients with hot symptoms should avoid ginseng because it's, it's, it's hot heat, can cause heat, venison, lamb, longan, and prawn, and eat more cooling food, and which is purslan, which is actually a, a, a plant, and lotus, asparagus, and, and, and duck. So they have this kind of concept that is not seen in the Western uh, medicine uh, kind of thinking, uh, but this is what the TCM uh, believe in. And we have, have a pungent sweet, and these are the thing that uh, uh, the uh, whatever you eat, how you promote. So a pungent thing can actually promote the chi. If you have sweet things, it actually uh, has way of nourishing and moisturizing. And, and if you have sour, it actually to absorb, absorb, let's say a, 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 a dry plum uh, or huame, uh, a sour things, they actually can absorb uh, some of the uh, of, of, of the heatiness and consolidate. Now, chrysanthemum, wolfberry, you know, can help with the cough and some of them help the inside the defense system and, and detoxify the spleen and the kidney. Now, undergoing patient, patient undergoing radiotherapy usually is uh, because of inflammation, they are warm and it can damage the qi and reduce the yin. And if you look into the patient's tongue, I say that I sometimes look into the patient's tongue and the tongue can become quite dark and become quite dry as well. I, I do see dry tongue quite regularly. And how TCM able to help this patient is to regulate the qi in the stomach and spleen and, and detoxify the liver and, and the kidney. And they use this kind of a lot of herbs uh, uh, to, to, to have this effect. Uh, so these are, are quite a standard kind of uh, uh, different herbs that can be used uh, uh, to get. But let's say take a talk to your TCM because this kind needs a mixture and how to mix it and the, the amount, how many grams to take is actually uh, need, need some TCM uh, input for, for that purposes. Now, if a patient undergoing chemotherapy, again, the same concept is to strengthen the skin and the, uh, tonify the kidney and improve the immune system and improve the blood circulation. And sometimes they are, some of the herbs can actually increase the red cell. Now, this one, I'm not sure because I've not done enough research in this, but this is from the book. So some of the things that I see that in, increasing uh, blood cells, let's say you get red this and you take goji berry, you know, these are actually uh, uh, not dangerous. And because they are food grade, uh, taken in a proper uh, small amount, they are actually quite okay. So you just think that if you want to take a ch chicken herbal soup and uh, with this kind of compound with a red taste and goji, it's completely okay uh, as, as, a, as a food supplement. Uh, and But as I said, be careful that don't drink in a very high concentration and some of the uh, uh, herbs actually can have some mild effect and actually can increase the white count and the platelets count and strengthen the immune system. These are all available in the book and talk to your TCM about that. And if some people have pre-surgery, these are the no four noble soup, uh, uh, surgeon tongue, and actually have uh, ability to help with the surgery uh, itself so that improve your condition before the surgery and post-surgery to improve uh, recovery uh, as well. These are all available as, as a soup content. And and some medicine are actually, uh, some of the herbal are not suitable for cancer patients. Let's say for this one, the Chinese yam, they actually uh, can actually uh, act like estrogen. 
So, so actually, because of the mild estrogenic effect and some of the breast cancer actually have estrogen receptor in it, it can actually uh, expose the patient to uh, unnecessary estrogen content. So, so always be careful that, you know, uh, there are things sometimes we do not know about that you can do more damage than harm. But, uh, and say Tang Pui is very common. Uh, it's okay to be taken uh, for breast cancer. There's some anti-cancer effect in Tang Pui as well. Uh, but some of them, you uh, say, taken how many times and whether any other herbs interaction, you have to be very careful because if you're taking anticoagulants because of warping, tongue quick can increase the risk of bleeding and can be very dangerous uh, if, the, if the risk of bleeding goes very high, you can get internal bleeding. Uh, it shouldn't be taken if you're pregnant or breastfeeding and, and you shouldn't take it when you're actually undergoing radiation because tongue quick increase the risk of skin sensitivity as well. So be very careful. I have one patient, well, well not not my patient, her or one patient where she take Saba snake grass and was taking uh, having radiotherapy and the skin was become very, very red. So some of these we actually know it, uh, we see it, and that's why I always check with your with your with your oncologist to see whether you can take it together or not with your current Western medicine treatment. And and if some of these uh, uh, food grade things uh, that you know uh, will help in the sense that maybe they're all food grade this is what the TCM will tell you. You can take sea cucumber, red dates, fake tomato, sweet potato, and all these are food grade and okay to be taken together with your Western food, uh, Western medicine. And, and zi tai, you know, we take quite a lot of this uh, zi tai, you can put it in your, in your thing. And actually it helps uh, have strengthened your qi, uh, zi tai. And then this is the purslan, uh, one of the uh, plant based. Uh, these are not consider proper TCM, but they actually will help your body as well. And that's the TCM will, will recommend you what to eat. And if you do Qi Gong itself, it seems that it can improve the health of the Qi itself. Again, the scientific effect of the Western medicine, they, they cannot prove this. Uh, but people with Qi Gong, I see that as, as a way to regulate your breathing, regulate your, your, me your mental mind, and do some uh, muscular and neurological exercise as well. And, and actually develop your, your inner well-being. And, and because of that, if you find that you get re more relaxed when doing Qigong, you uh, actually can sleep better, eat better, and actually eventually you can actually strengthen your immune system. So I think most of the, the expect must be a holistic in nature. It's not one for, for everything, but actually it, it's a focus on the whole body uh, uh, health. Uh, that is actually quite important concept in, in TCM. The general advice is still that, you know, when we, as a cancer patient, you, if you do a uh, normal public, they try to avoid smoking, avoid excessive alcohol, eat meals at a fixed time, sleep early, you know, avoid overeating, avoid stress and, and overworking, maintain peace in your heart and your mind, live a simple life with, with a lack of needs, you know, with, with no needs, and stay in a good spirit, smile and laugh, or, uh, and be active in your body, uh, actions and physical activity, and also your mind as well, and avoid excessive condition in too extreme heat and too extreme cold, humidity, and wind and dryness. And in some way, you know, always consult a TCM physician and avoid self-medication and let your oncologist know. And the TCM principle is a complementary role in symptomatic cancer patient uh, with internal disorder and it helps three things. Number one is to help the qi, number two is to help the blood status, and to, number three is to help uh, regulate your yin and yang. Uh, and because of that, uh, you know, it can help uh, uh, in the general well-being and treat the symptoms. Now, the good news is that the cancer survival in Singapore is, uh, is, has increased. So back, you know, 40 years back, you know, uh, when and the cancer, uh, five-year, you know, what we call uh, survival is only about 30%. And moving 40 years, you know, we have gone to 60%. So my advice has always been that please go and see a proper Western doctor to get your cancer treated because the chances of surviving the cancer is 60% now, you know. These are for all types of cancer. And, and, and all stages and can go up. So we have actually increased a lot. You know, now, now the cancer treatment, uh, even the side effect and symptoms, we have a lot of good medicine to, to help the symptoms, but we can do better. We can do better. And I think TCM has a role to play. Uh, 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 majority of the participants here is Chinese. I'm Chinese myself, although I don't really understand TCM as a whole, but I've taken TCM when I was very young uh, until now. So, so I think if, as long as you use TCM as a supplement and make sure you see a TCM uh, uh, physician and do not ignore and use TCM 
as your primary cancer treatment, I think that is wrong. If you use TCM and say, this is my cure, I'm just going to do TCM alone. I'm not going to do any other effect and ignore the, 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 the advice of doctor. I think this is not correct because there's a risk of dying. Uh, uh, cancer can be early stage and become an advanced stage if it's, uh, if it's uh, you know, not, not treated properly. And this is a slice that say that even the World Health uh, Cancer Research, they say that this is how you develop an uh, active lifestyle, be a healthy way, active, eat a whole grain meal, limit your fast food, reduce uh, sweetened things, you know, try not to take sugar uh, in, in your drinks and limit alcohol consumption. And this actually can expect, uh, uh, actually improve your, your, your lifestyle and quality of life. So I'm just going to end soon. Uh, uh, this slide is that when I went to sing in my NPC, uh, supporting in front of the president uh, back in 2018, and then uh, in newspaper, we had run a lot of cancer support groups. So uh, Singapore Cancer Society, Breast Cancer Foundation, 365 Cancer Prevention, they are all uh, NGO that's actually quite important because we use cancer survivors to help uh, cancer patients to go through the process of a difficult journey. And sometimes we go on radios, we do cooking show, and this is my contact. Uh, uh, eventually, in, 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 in soon, I will have a, uh, I want to, so education is my passion. I want to teach people and, and how to uh, live better with cancer and how to help general public prevent getting cancer. So I'm going to start on a master class, a cancer webinar, taking uh, small groups of people to uh, lifestyle management and cancer management. But of course, this will be my time. It's uh, going to be chargeable, but I'm going to spend a few hours every week uh, talking uh, to patients, uh, uh, going through the process and and, and, and and helping them to manage their cancer better. So this is 100 fabulous people. Uh, Small Cancer Society published this book. 50% of the donation for this book by Catherine. I'm one of the 100 people featured in this book of fabulous people. Uh, uh, and, and eventually we will have, going to have this uh, book launch uh, through Zoom uh, to feature for cancer alone. Uh, so 26th of February, uh, have more details, I'm going to take out a uh, registration soon. Uh, there are few cancer survivors inside the group uh, and, and work in cancer work. And we're going to give a short uh, talk and launch the book uh, to the cancer, uh, to a Zoom platform. Okay. And then this is my page inside the book itself. And this is Peter Tang uh, and John, another of my uh, co-founder of my NPC support group. And I will have a few books coming up uh, sometime uh, in the next few months. Uh, I, I'm Cancer and Corway and Devotional Guide in Cancer and also uh, frequently asked question in breast cancer. So at the end of the year, you can email me and this book will be hopefully available soon and partly uh, writing to it. So I be, because I believe that you must understand the cancer biology, how it works and how it spread and all the treatments so that you can better understand how the doctors can treat you. So these are important Q&A things that, that I always are passionate about to, to exercise. So this is the end of my talk. I'll be taking questions. It's exactly one hour of my talk thing. If you can actually help me, uh, uh, because this Singapore Cancer Society uh, wanted to have feedback. So if you just point your, your, your phone, if you have it with you, and point it at, at the QR code and, and queue in the, the feedback form, uh, then I will open the section uh, for Q&A. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chu. <laughs> okay. Um... Shall we proceed with Q&A right now? Okay, so there are quite a few questions that have been posted already. Uh, but in the meantime, if let's say you still have uh, questions, of course you can continue to post. But if you prefer to ask your questions by talking, uh, you can use the raise hand button in uh, the phone or the laptop that you're using, or otherwise wait till the end. Um, then uh, we will open for uh, uh, questions on the ground, okay? Um, so, um, Dr. Chu, would you, um, because it's quite a long list, yeah, so yeah, perhaps, yeah. perhaps let me screen, let me screen the, 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 the questions uh, because I've yeah. noted it then. Okay, hold on now. By the way, how many how many joined the meeting? Uh? Seems that a lot I didn't count. Hundred and thirty. We have about hundred and thirty people. Hundred and thirty people. Hi everyone. Yes, <laughs> wonderful, right? <laughs> okay, can y'all see my screen now? Okay, so uh, Doctor Chu, can you see the questions? Yes, I can see. Okay, we start from the top, perhaps. 
Okay. So uh, breast cancer patient uh, after treatment during Western the more uh, what is the view from? Okay, so uh, a general TCM approach, it depends on whether you have symptoms or not. So let's say TCM treat the syndrome. If you're quite fit and well, then the answer is that you do not really need TCM. Unless you've got specific symptoms, they say you're not sleeping, eating well, you know, you have some condition. So I think a TCM will be able to help you to add on some treatment to treat your symptoms. So it also depends on whether you have a balance of yin and yang and things like that, you know. So, but you're doing the right thing because you are you are taking a more a plant-based diet, which is actually quite important. You should lose some some weight if you are overweight, because uh the main risk factor of breast cancer is actually being overweight and maintain a BMI of about 23, and, and exercise is good and sufficient sleep. So, it's actually quite important. So, if you're well in yourself, I think no need, you know. But if you think that you have some things that uh, uh, syndrome, you may consult, yeah. My heart function is affected by uh, taking, okay. So the heart function usually uh, chemotherapy, example uh, for a uh, doxorubicin, which one of the chemotherapy used for breast cancer can affect. Sometimes the heart damage is permanent. Most of the time is actually uh, can recover after a certain period of time. So some of the condition uh, function can be reversible. So you have to check with your oncologist about that. Mm -hmm. So heart medication that helps actually is uh, something like ACE inhibitor something to relax your heart, slow it down, and, 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 and to maintain the function. So there are multiple medications now that can help heart function. These are mainly derived from people who have a previous uh, heart angina or heart attack. But with those who, those who are a bit of heart failure, we know that uh, Western medicine has been quite successful as well. So how you consult the TCM, I, I think it's, it's no harm to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm not a TCM myself, but, but I think some of the Western uh, heart medicine actually quite effective as, as well. So, so again, it uh, depends. I know some of the TCM can actually reduce the swelling. Sometimes the heart failure can cause a, a ankle swelling, and sometimes they can actually remove some of this fluid uh, through some herbs. Uh, has TCM been researched to prolong life? Okay, uh, so this is anecdotal, yeah. So if a patient with a stage four disease, and, and if the patient has undergo multiple lines of chemotherapy, and the oncologist say that unfortunately none of them has worked very well, I do we ask them to go and see the TCM. And surprisingly, I say surprisingly, uh, that I have a few patients who actually have survived longer than I expected, uh, and not receiving any Western medicine or but just on TCM. So, but again, not sure why, and there are multiple reasons, you know. So it's not one one size fits all. Uh, but but I always say that if, if I I don't usually give up hope. I say that if, if there's nothing else to do, please try TCM uh, for stage four uh, because at least they can help the symptoms. Because when you're stage four, there's no no treatment. Sometimes the symptoms like you know uh, loss of appetite, loss of weight, is become more pronounced, and sometimes they have pain. So so I think TCM can help with the sim uh, the symptoms of that. And if you look at, is it safe to use TCM as complementary or on targeted? Uh, that is a challenge because we do not really know how how the drug, drug and drug interaction between Herceptin, Projecta, you know, CD4 uh, is inhibitor compared to TCM. As I say, some of the TCM actually they are herbal grade, they are, they are actually supplements, you know, for food grade, like, you know, red day, goji berry. I don't see any problems with mixing that because, you know, you, you drink like a soup, you know, and these are, I think, completely safe as well. Uh, but I think mild kind of uh, food grade uh, herbs are usually okay. But if you take like stronger medicine, like you know, Dong Chung Chao or you know, Tang Kui, you really have to be very careful uh, to see whether there's any drug and drug interaction. And, and nowadays, uh, with with uh, with uh, with, uh, with our medical journals, are usually sometimes able to look ah, and expect. I, I message you in a minute. Yeah, into the aspect of it, lah. So, so I, again, to to and do any of this, right? It's it's best to ask the doctors to go into uh, research and look at whether there's any reported drug and drug interaction uh, before you actually it can be recommended. I say, uh, being an oncologist, most of us are very conservative. We, for the safety sake, we try not to mix them. But I say that they are, they are diff really different. There's so many different herbs available. So can cook herbal soup without putting meat? Uh, the answer is, is yes. Uh, and sometimes uh, people, I know, take goji berry you know, and then red dates and then long yen and then that's all they take, they just boil it, you know, no, no need to have anything in it and, and don't have to. The meat itself is just to add in the protein as well and the bone and all that have a marrow in it, so increase the protein content. Uh, but some of the herbs are, you know, some of those even uh, available in capsule and powder uh, for this, you can, you can take it. 
Uh, not all TCM are equal, you know, they're always. You know. Yeah, so actually TCM is what I call is an experience based. So unlike me, you know, I prescribe Panadol, it's just one gram, you know, two tablets, you know, there's one one size fits all. But TCM really is the experience of the TCM to able to mix and use different uh, concoction with multiple various herbal remedy together at different dosage. Now this comes to the experience of the TCM. That's why I say that you need to find a good uh, also experience TCM and do not do this uh, mixture yourself because you have no idea whether you overdone it or not because a different concentration will counteract the effect of each other. So this herb and herb interaction, you, you really, the TCM need to go for four years of master in TCM to actually come and, and learn all this. You know, you cannot learn it from the internet, you know, please don't use a book and learn it yourself and, and see a proper TCM uh, for, for, to, for that advice if you want to have any of this prescription. Now, osimertinib is a lung cancer drug for MTEGFR. Uh, it's very similar to Irisa, which I just used a case report uh, thing. Again, depends on your symptoms. Uh, if your symptoms are actually quite okay and you're quite well, you don't need to use TCM. But of course, uh, uh, some of the drugs can can be taken with osimertinib, but again, uh, mostly uh, they, are, they are quite mild. Uh, depends on your symptoms. Let's say you've got lots of appetite, you can use some of the drugs to improve your appetite. And I think I think it's okay, but you have to let your oncologist know and your TCM uh, doctor know what drug you are. Osimertinib is actually quite new. It's only been on the market for the, the last two years. So I can tell you that there are very, very few publications and nobody will know uh, whether there's any drug in drug interaction because these drugs are all very new drugs. Where to go for reliable TCM? Yeah. Nowadays, TCM, you cannot register and say, say, say yourself your TCM oncologist, but there are a few people who actually uh, call themselves TCM oncologists. And some of the cancers actually are quite complicated. And most of the time, you know, uh, some of the TCM uh, have specialist interest in cancer and they will only see cancer patients. Uh, there are, they are few uh, very big, uh, uh, so I don't do any advertisement, uh, but there are very few very big TCM groups. Uh, some of them are free clinics, you know, uh, Chonghua, uh, um, and there's one at uh, 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 Ch Chongxing, uh, and, and all these are big TCM groups. There are multiple uh, private, uh, uh, so uh, private, uh, uh, TCM as well uh, uh, around a uh, smaller group, uh, but I think you have to ask the TCM whether they have uh, experience in, in cancer or not. Uh, finding a good TCM, some of the TCM only see cancer, so so I think I think it's okay uh, to 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 say that. Some some of the TCM I tell I tell have refused to see T uh, oncolo oncology patient because they say it's too complicated. They don't do it. They rather do uh, not maternity, pregnancy, and fertility. You know. Okay. Uh, I'm a breast cancer. I'm taking tamoxifen three years in remission, and endoscopy show a uh, lot of ulcer in my colon. Mm. Yeah, tamoxifen. Uh, I've not known to to cause ulcer in the colon, uh, so it must be uh, something else that, that that to do that. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. But if you're taking any medicine that's unnecessary, then stop all your medicine for now, uh, and I'm sure that they will. They will actually do uh, regulate some bowel health, uh, take more plant-based uh, thing, and and try not to take things that uh, 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 ulcer in the colon is actually quite unusual, you know. Ulcer in the colon, ulcer in the stomach is very common. Ulcer in the colon is a bit unusual. Usually, when the ulcer in the colon is something like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, uh, sometimes it's just acute inflammation. Uh, sometimes it comes and goes. So actually, it's um. Uh, unable to comment because I don't really know how the ulcer looks like. So I have to take, still take your advice from the doctor, but, but try not to over supplement. A lot of people over supplement and everything also take, you know, I say it's not a good advice. So so limit the amount of things you take. Take only things when you're really ne necessary to take. So a lot of the oral supplement, you really you don't, don't have to take if you're eating a normal healthy diet. Uh, differences in Chinese stem and tang wei, yeah. So this question I cannot, uh, maybe I ask a, a physician uh, uh, TCM because I, I do not know what's the difference. Chinese TCM and Tang Wei, why is there a different alternative? Uh, physician, you need to unmute your mic, okay. Oh, okay, Ken. Hi, hi everyone, I'm Physician Leong. Okay, so the what has been happening in the in terms of Western research is that they have found that uh, Chinese TCM, San Yao, as well as Tang Kui, Okay, both have estrogenic effects, but 
further researchers have actually been shown that tang kui in different doses is actually quite okay. So it actually boils back down to what Dr. Chu was explaining earlier. As in much earlier in the slide, he ex actually explained the differences in your yin and yang as well as your body constitution. So you should be matching the body constitution to what kind of herbs is suitable for yourself. But shan yao has always been avoided for any of the hormone types of cancer. So usually we try not to use shan yao. But tang kui, depending on the body constitution of the person, then we can do. Uh, as with, um, we also do hope that more research is being done, you know, in um, according to different classes, not just on the research material, but actually conducting clinical trials to find out how can all these different types of herbal medication can match and be a more uh, complementary approach with uh, Western drugs. But we do hope that more research can be done. Lah. But in the meantime, okay, do try to avoid sun yao. Tang kui, always check back with your TCM physician. Back to you, Dr. Chu. Okay, that's good. Uh, okay, this one, uh, okay, this one asking for recommendation. Uh, this is Xing Liu. <laughs> he asking you uh, whether uh, complement oral, oral treatment. So, okay, mm. let me ask you a question. So, what can... Uh, uh, TCM that's safe to use while patient is on some chemotherapy. Mm, okay, so chemotherapy that is always the IV and the oral medication wise, right? So usually IV we will tell patients to stop their chemo, uh, stop their TCM herbs about uh, twenty four to forty eight hours uh, before and after their IV treatments. Whereas for oral ones is usually just avoiding it uh, two to four hours apart. So it really depends on what is the type of uh, chemo drugs you're using. And then from there on, it depends also on whether are you using like um, the herbal concoction or just like a supplement as uh, physician Chu has, uh, Dr. Chu has shared earlier. So if you are doing more towards like a soup-based herbal soup that uh, we have shared earlier, okay, then in that case, you can just, uh, you know, take a smaller dose because that is actually a very small amount, you know, that you can actually consume on a daily basis. But if you're talking about real um, concoction, like medicinal level kind of concoction, then it's just better to avoid. Lah. Um, uh, for me, okay, I really like using huang qi because um, like just now Dr. Chu has also shared earlier that ginseng, okay, because of his strong nourishing of qi, so it actually kind of pushes up the chi, leading to, you know, like headaches and even like raised BPs and all. Whereas huang qi is something that is quite mild. It can actually be taken on a, a weekly basis, more towards strengthening your chi, yet doesn't have that very strong effect. So that could be a complementary or even tangshen, these two together to complement each other. Uh, but of course, we are talking about TCM is usually used in a herbal concoction, you know, not just a single dose uh, or single type of medicine. So it really boils back down to what is your main um, body constitution, what is the type of drugs you are taking, what is the type of cancer you are taking. And then from there, we can get the more balanced approach. Okay, so can I ask if you if somebody want to increase their immunity, what what herbs will you use? Okay, if you want to increase your immunity, immunity is synonymous to qi, uh, which just now Dr. Chu has shared earlier. So qi, when you want to boost qi, so you will you can take different herbs to boost um different kinds of qi, right? Like I said, uh, huang qi is actually very good. Tang shen together, or even bai zhu and all, all this kind of boost your chi. But you cannot just boost your chi alone. Try to boost a bit of your blood together with the chi because they run, um, they run, they run uh, well with each other. They, they, they merge well. So you can throw in a bit of gou qi zi. It nourishes your yin, it nourishes your blood, uh, a bit of red dates as well. So that these two can actually work synergistically together. So these are some of the common ones. But of course, when we go to the medicinal level, then it will be a higher dose as well. So like what you said earlier, something that is for herbal soup. So when we want six grams of uh, huang qi is okay. But once we, if the, as, under the physician's um, advice or when the physician has seen a patient, then we can go up level like 10 grams, even 20 grams. So back down to the physician, how they view the patient. Mm. Okay, that's good. 
Thank you so much. You stay online, yeah. It's just on the <laughs> thanks all the questions. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, okay, this one we answered already. Uh, then we answer that. Okay, what kind of herbal can soften the cancer cell after layer? This one don't know lah. We how to can soften cancer cell layer? We usually okay, say this is a very interesting question because yes. a lot of people actually see. TCM as a uh, equivalent in terms of research to uh, Western medicine, but yeah. in TCM, right, there is no like, oh, what is the cell's outer layer? What is the right. cell's inner mechanism? So you cannot really equate it that way. Cannot yeah. really equate it that way. Uh, although I do, do have to say, if we really want to do into this, I can actually try to search on more uh, research articles to see if there is any particular uh, like research that have been done to see what are the herbs that can soften. But this is an interesting question. I should look into it as well. Yeah, but one of the paper we, we saw earlier was the the, mm. the herbal can actually strengthen uh, your NK cell. NK cell is a natural killer cell. Actually, the natural killer cell uh, can attack cancer cell uh, per se and, and perforate the cell membrane. So actually, you're not actually mm. killing cancer cell. You're actually increasing your immunity. Use the, with your white cell to kill off the, the cancer. So it's a different diff, different thing. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And I like the fact that you actually bring in the antioxidants into it because that can indirectly help to strengthen the immunity as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it true that radiation can be cannot be applied? The answer is not true. It depends on your dose. If you're radiation to the breast again, uh, breast before, it may really be the breast. Depends on the dose and depends on the location. But in principle, we try not to overlap and retreat again. But the answer is that if the dose that you the patient receive is not at maximum yet, you know, we can actually retreat again if if uh, if, uh, if a different dose, uh, lower dose usually. So it's twin now okay for breast cancer. It stimulates the body. Okay, I just quickly answer from my spec, then ask physician now to do that. Because twin now, I went to twin now myself. You know, I got muscular pain. So twin now actually helps help my muscular pain. So a uh, breast cancer, you have to be careful because you can get lymph edema on the arm itself. So aggressive twin now actually may actually worsen it. But gentle, uh, you know, physio physiotherapy will tell you to teach you how to do simple exercises and actually uh, manual lymphatic drainage massage. And that, that is actually not so much of Twina, but a bit of decompression massage uh, is possible. So it really had to depends on who you go to and they must be well versed in how to do it. Okay, Physician Leung, what do you think? Yeah, I do agree. So with regards to massage, right, or Twina in the aspect, it really depends on the person must have experience with uh, cancer patients. And then it also depends on if there is like any open wound and all, if the uh, therapies can manage it as well. Uh, likewise, what you say with regards to the lymphedema, there's actually the swelling. So um, you need a lighter dose. You need to work on the lymphatic drainage as well as the muscular portion, as well as Twina helps to improve the meridian flow, your chi flow. So it's a combination of different things back down to the experience of the therapist. Okay, very good. So can TCM be a way of prevention? The answer is yes, because I say that TCM has always been a holistic approach and it's this cultivation of the body and cultivation of the mind, you know. So in the sense that it's, it's a mind, mind and body kind of approach. So TCM will always recommend, you know, sometimes to extreme, I think it's extreme because you cannot eat this, cannot eat that, cannot eat that. But in a way, I, I sometimes listen to them in the sense that I don't eat sugar anymore. You know, you say that sugar, sugar doesn't really feed cancer, but I don't think sugar at all in, in, in my thing because I think you, I don't need that sugar, you know, uh, but but if you have sugar and you have diabetes and then of course it's not good in the sense that try to avoid unnecessary sugar. So in a way TCM are very good in the sense that because they, they have some restriction of what you can do, what not you can cannot do. So if you have a high risk of gastric cancer, then you should avoid barbecue, barbecue food and, and all that, you know, uh, and take more vegetables. So anything else, you, what preemptive TCM you can recommend? Okay, uh, so with because gastric cancer, right, back down to the digestive system. Okay, no spicy food and no cold drinks. Okay, no spicy food, no cold drinks uh, because that really impacts your digestive system uh, leading to higher propensity, higher susceptibility to all these uh, issues as well. Uh, like what Dr. Chu said, uh, no sugar, avoiding sugar is one of the better approach as well. Oh yes, one more thing, no cold drinks. Yeah. This one, I, I, I tell oh. this is the highest number one pet peeve 
<laughs> no cold drinks. Yes, yes. No ice Milo. Uh, yes, no ice Milo. <laughs> <laughs> sugar and, 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 and ice. <laughs> the worst of two things. Then you want dinosaur Milo some more, added some more Milo on top. <laughs> No, 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 no. Try, okay. try, try not to lie. It's, it's uh, actually a very good, um, like, uh, one, what's this called? Uh, like, a uh, shift of uh, your mindset because your body doesn't really need it. You may crave for it as maybe a bit of like, oh, you know, uh, like I'm craving for it. But once you get past that craving phase, your your body no longer needs it. Then it's, you, you are, you're actually quite all right without the Milo dinosaur. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask, um, so the doctor mentioned no, uh, preservatives uh, or preserved food in specific <laughs> what is considered preserved food I, I think if you have a uh, cure meat you know ham and all that so that preserved that means and any a uh, canned food is still okay depends let's say a canned tuna a uh, canned tuna is just a bit of salt and all. so it, luncheon meat I uh, consider as processed and also preserved so all the cn you know salted fish is preserved and la up, you know, uh, smoke, smoke duck, they are also preserved. So there is some chemical changes already inside. I and mean, when you eat it, uh, yeah, and, and these are carcinogenic because of uh, nitro amines inside. Uh, and that's it. So try to eat your, your, your food as fresh. You know, sometimes when you actually preserve the food, some of the enzyme activity and the antioxidant effect actually reduce dramatically. I'll give you an example. A lot of people take green tea. You know, you have like green tea, you go to oolong cha, and then after that you go to, uh, 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 you know, the, the more uh, darker tea. So actually we become oxidized, some of the antioxidant effect from green to become darker tea will actually get, 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 but of course you got the, the taste and the smell is different. But but I myself take green tea uh, because it's, it's more uh, natural in the cells. So a lot of the plants, right, make sure the, the vegetables, you try to eat as fresh as you can. And then then, then don't put it and, you know, and, and try to preserve, you know, like, you know, the, the preserve ham cai, sien cai, you know. Sien cai, you know, a lot of the thing, why do you put salt inside and then try to preserve? In the olden days, they do it because, you know, they don't have refrigerator and that's the reason. But nowadays, you know, you eat, things as fresh as possible because the enzyme there is actually quite important as well. The enzyme is lost. Okay, thank you. Then what about um, preserved vegetables like kimchi uh, or, or vegetables that is um, uh, soaked in vinegar? Is that considered preserved? Uh, depends how, how fast you eat it. Uh, my, my kimchi, and uh, when I was uh, taught by a Korean how to cook kimchi, the Korean kimchi, they tell you honestly, it's supposed to eat it within three to seven days. They say you don't put it for two months, you know, even they say that there's no nutrition. So a Korean people will eat kimchi only three to seven days when they make it themselves. Because although it's preserved, it's supposed to, you know, preserve for a short while. Because the longer you wait, the more, you know, the, the, the properties is going to be lost. So the answer is, is no harm doing that. And but I say that the kimchi, if you put some chili sauce and then put it inside a, a, a cabbage, it's like kimchi already, right? So actually it's, it's better than put a kimchi that's eaten uh, two, two weeks ago. But uh, yeah, but eat as fresh as you can. But it's okay to eat preserved thing, but but preserved meat, you be a bit careful because preserved meat is the really, really, really the unhealthy one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think relating to the questions that a couple of people who asked is no cold drinks for all cancer patients or just for certain types of cancer? <laughs> These are interesting questions. People always try to circumvent it. Actually, it's no cold drinks for everyone. Okay, because um, on top of what Dr. Chu shared earlier on the different, um, like the, the theory-wise of TCM, right? Um, when we look at cancer cells, okay, or we look at a tumor growth, right? Any kind of tumor growth, like cysts and fibroids as well. There is always a link of it being what we call blood stagnation or even phlegm dampness. Okay, this one may be a bit more uh, in depth of what what Doctor Chu shared earlier, but because how does blood stagnation and phlegm dampness occur, right? Often enough, is because your body is not warm enough. Yeah, so cold drinks, okay, when it goes into the body, it's probably, okay, let's look at the minor dinosaur. It goes in the body at about um, 20 degrees, but your body internal core temperature is about 36.9. So your body will actually spend a lot more time, you know, warming it up, like digesting it and all. 
So that affects the effectiveness of the digestive system to fully uh, absorb the good nutrients from whatever that you're eating. So therefore, cold drinks is should be avoided by everyone. So no more bubble tea, okay? No more taping, no more ice Milo, no more yeah, all this cold stuff. Even okay, having said that, even it comes down to your ice creams. Uh, when we have like sashimi, all these cold food items. Yeah, so we should be avoided by all, but especially for cancer patients. Yeah, um, agreed. Mm. There is a question. Cold noodles also no, no, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, ideally avoided, ideally avoided. Okay. Um, although like some people do say that, oh, you know what, if I make a juice, Correct. Juice is like what Dr. Chu said. Okay, yeah. you should have more green vegetables and juices. So like that, mm, how can I drink my juices but yet uh, negate the cooling effect? Okay, so the other way is that usually we throw in warming things to it. So you can put in some turmeric powder, cinnamon powder, or you can use ginger. Just blend the ginger together with the juices itself. So this... Um, hopefully, hopefully can negate the coolingness of the juice itself. Okay, and above that, there's another question. Is masala tea better compared to green tea? <laughs> the taste is very different. <laughs> I don't know about the anti-cancer effect. I have no idea. No, okay. okay it, it, there are one of the research that showed that drinking green tea reduces the risk of prostate cancer. So a Japanese study has shown that. But you need to drink four cups of tea uh, for a number of years. Uh, so actually, it's a persist. It's, it's a lifestyle thing. It's not like I, I drink green tea for one week, two weeks. You know, it's a long term. So actually, when you actually eat and drink, I always think the the principle of eating and drinking is to enjoyment and to have pleasure. That's very, very important because we all we will die one day, right? We all will die one day. So pleasure in life is very important. So <laughs> someone saying that, you know, can I eat durian? Of course, you eat durian once it's a pleasure in life. Pleasure in life is very important, you know. And some people will choose to jump down from a cliff to, to see bungee jumping. Why do they do that? It's stupid or not. But because it's pleasure in life, they want to have some excitement. If you durian one seat bring you excitement go and eat the durian and forget about getting cancer and then don't worry about that because we're important so actually enjoy the masala tea and enjoy the green tea i think regardless whatever your taste is but i think i think drink drink tea is good drinking tea is good better than coca-cola and dinosaur milo <laughs> yeah definitely so uh in relation related to the questions again uh this this, this question is very popular right <laughs> So, um, chili. Chili is supposed to contain um capsaicin, which good, which is good yeah. for you. Yes. Um. So maybe moderate amounts or completely to none. Um. Yeah, that's a question. Like, should it be a moderate amount or completely to none? no? You want to answer that or? Uh, okay, I think it's back down to moderate amount. So, for example, if you are taking something that's cooling, okay, uh, like you said, pleasure in life. Okay, what about crab, right? So, Singaporeans all like to eat crab. But crab is considered cooling by nature. So, that's why there is always black pepper crab, there is ginger crab, there is, uh, like, uh, what's this called? What's our favourite? Chilli crab. Chili crab. So, yeah, <laughs> chilli crab. So, because... All these, all these are warming herbs to combat the coolingness of the crab. So if you are if you are going to take some chili, okay, it's always back down to moderate amount. Yeah, it's the same similar idea, similar ideology lah. Okay, so um, can eating some cut chilies or ginger help to warm up body? In my opinion, yes. Mm, yes, <laughs> to a certain extent, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think it's good in overall. Uh, chili has some uh, very good uh, the cap cap capsaicin is actually quite quite good. But I saw everything is in moderation because if you have a weak stomach, you eat too much chili, right? Then then it's not yeah. not too good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Maybe we continue with questions. Um. I think the next one is. Uh. Hi, Doctor Chu. I'm a breast cancer survivor. Is it true that some TCM can activate uh cancer cells? Uh, uh, unknown, you know. So most of the time, uh, I'm not activate cancer cell means bad or good. Uh. That means activate means means uh, the cancer cell get worse, is it? Or inactivate cancer cells. Um, some of the TCM, I say that if you given since the only thing that I can see is the alpha toxin, some of the fungal thing actually is, is quite is carcinogenic. 
Um, I, I, I think not, not entirely sure uh, whether TCM actually caused the cancer worse or not. Uh, the, how TCM can inactivate cancer cell is uh, usually is building up the immunity. And, uh, I will not be surprised if there's a direct effect on it, but just that we do not know enough. Okay, so next is a question by Annie. Um, Chinese yam is also referred to those fresh, raw Chinese yam. We use in soup making. Uh, should it be avoided for breast cancer hormones type? Um, ideally, yes. So back down to the research, they have shown that because of the estrogenic effect. So usually just try to avoid it. You can always substitute it with other uh, herbs and all. So you don't have to like, you know, just use Chinese yam. Okay, a uh, question for physician. Um, mm. So if the patient does not experience any side effects from treatment, is it advisable to seek TCM therapy? So it actually boils back down to the patient themselves. So uh, usually TCM is used as a complement, right? So it kind of boosts your body's uh, body constitution, boosts your immunity and all. So it really boils back down to what is your blood count and all. So when you visit a TCM physician, always try to bring all your medical reports so that will give the TCM physician eh, a more clearer picture of what you're going through as well. Okay. All right. And uh, next, uh, is foot reflexology okay for cancer patients at, as it helps to stimulate meridians? Um, this is good. Okay. Uh, having said that, there are some people who may not be that suitable especially if like they are diabetic and also you have to get uh, experienced therapies to do for them. So the food reflexology, it's okay if you do it on your own because you can uh, manage the strength and the depth that you are doing. Uh, general massage across the sole of the feet or even the palm, your palm itself is actually quite good to stimulate the different meridian and organs through it. Okay, um, there are really more questions, so let me unshare my screen first and then we'll go read in, uh, straight into the chat box. Okay, so I will read it out, okay? Um, okay, uh, is TCM Boyd medicine more effective and more safe than powder medicine? Okay, uh, this, like what Dr. Chu has shared earlier, you need to make sure you clean the herbs properly, okay? Because uh, no matter where you get the sauce from, is, as long as it's legitimate sauce, then usually it should be quite all right, yeah. Um, is durian okay for cancer patients? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you where to buy. I tell you where to buy. It's <laughs> twenty dollars for kg now. <laughs> I, think, I think the concern is because it will create heat effect. Yeah, you mm. should take in moderation. Must take in small number. You cannot overeat durian. Durian is dangerous to be overeaten. Yeah. It's not easy heat. There are a lot of pesticides in it as well. So you must be very careful. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Chu, um, some people say eat half boiled eggs is very good for health. Can cancer patients eat this since this is not fully cooked? Uh, I, I think uh, the, the egg in Singapore at least has been a screen through for infection because it can cause bacterial infection. So, so half boiled egg is actually quite okay, but, but I found that you know, the yakun and toast ball is really like almost like you know, half raw, not half boiled, it's half raw egg, you know. So, so most of the time, uh, cancer patient, their immunity may be low. Is very worried about infection. So, uh, 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 properly cooked and more of half, more than half boiled egg will be uh, preferable. Now, uh, uh, egg itself has a very high protein content. So, you don't worry about the cholesterol. If patient actually is uh, losing weight and cancer patient, I usually ask them to eat two to four eggs a day, and that actually give them uh, uh, nine gram. Uh, one one egg is about two grams, so actually give them eight gram of protein a day, and that is actually very good uh, because they, they usually struggle with anything. So egg in porridge, right, is most of the time they, people can eat without any problems, uh, uh, because they they cannot eat any meat and scale of meat, and then sometimes you know fun way, you know meat is uh, sometimes uh, so egg is actually quite easy to eat, uh, so egg is good, but I usually would say that cook it a bit more than than half boil. Okay. Okay, um, okay, how to reduce the marked bloatedness and severe burping? You can answer, uh, bloatedness due to? Um, that's a generic question. Generic, yeah. Mm. 
How does it feel to use bloatedness? Okay, usually. Severe bloatedness la, and uh, okay, you for the clinic we actually use some herbs in the concoction. Yeah, uh, you can check out these three herbs. They are called charcoal tree fairies. Okay, charcoal tree fairies. That's the English translation la, But actually in Chinese it's called jiao san xian. Jiao san xian. Jiao means charcoal. San xian means uh, is shen qu mai ya and uh, shen qu mai ya san zha. So these three herbs together can help to improve the digestive function of the body. And because they are charcoal, right? So they are less uh less tsuji sing, less uh um, less impacting on the digestive system. Yeah, so these three herbs used together, they can be used in your normal soup as well to actually um try to ease off some of the, the digestive system that uh Treza is feeling la. Okay. Okay, in the Western, uh, there's a medicine that we call semanticon. Semanticon is actually, if you see the baby, a lot of perfume right, after they drink milk, right? And there's something called wheat wind. Uh. So you're using, you're using uh, wheat wind is to, for the wind of the baby. Uh, that one actually reduces the wind in the stomach, wheat wind, yeah? And so for the burping, yeah. So there's a medicine for that. I use that for my baby. <laughs> yeah, that's why <all>, yeah. <laughs> I can answer the question. <laughs> okay, uh, to Dr. Chiu, for triple... Triple negative breast cancer patient, do they also need to avoid San Yao? San Yao is what? Uh? <laughs> the, the Chinese yam. Chinese yam. Uh? Uh, triple mm. negative. Uh, so triple negative means they don't have estrogen inside the receptor. I think it's okay. Uh? I think it's okay. I do believe so as well. Mm. Um, okay. So can I ask, um, sorry, can I ask for Chinese yam is San Yao and Huai Shan. There's a difference, right? The Shan Yang and Huai Shan is the same thing. Huai just means the location where it was, uh, the original location where it's uh, harvested. Lah. Yeah, but they are both the same thing. Okay, got it. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to screen through the question, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, read out for everyone. Um, my uncle is adamant that TCM is bad for liver. Mm -hmm. and WC, as she has seen many cases of liver failure. Yeah. Um, she says even modern China Chinese are avoiding as also confirmed by my China friend. What are your views on this? I tell about my Western view first, like, a lot of TCM is unregulated. Unregulated TCM is very dangerous. Yeah. Because everything, they think that you know they can cure all these kind of conditions. They're actually not proper TCM. A proper TCM will always consider you must see a TCM physician. A zero physician will know what to do and the dosage is very important. So a lot of these failed cases, right, is because they are managed very poorly and then the whole reputation of TCM got a very bad name for that. Uh, and I don't I don't consider them as uh, most of the time they are really failed because they're self-medicate. Uh, okay. Okay, next. So this, uh, yeah. Uh, physician you want to defend yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, I I do think like I do agree with uh, what Dr. Chu has said. Lah. So it really depends on who you are visiting. Okay. Um, do not self-medicate. Even if the remember just now the, the one of the slides that Dr. Chu has shared that has all the different herbs and all on the screen, they are all individually, they're all very safe herbs. Okay. But back down to when does it match your body constitution, it always boils down back to what the your TCM physician says. So always see someone who has experience okay and someone that who can be able to help you can actually also use your western uh treatment plan uh and pair it uh synergistically so then that will be the best approach for all and in, in the hospital that i was in uh i was in the tongfang hospital back in beijing so in there is a, actually what they call the Zhong Si Yi Jie He, means they actually complement TCM and Western medicine together. So in China, it's actually Zhong Si Yi Jie He is very, very popular uh, in to combat all these chronic conditions. Okay. And what does it say that a lot of the liver failure is because they mix Western and so you mix the chemotherapy with, uh, with, uh, with uh, TCM itself, right? They potentiate each other effect on the liver. And because of that, you got higher toxicity, and because they block the you know, block the excretion. So actually, most of the most of cases I see because they mix them. You mix them, you're asking for trouble. 
But I think liver, I think TCM alone, given in the safe, without any mixing, I think a lot of people are on it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. It's like you, you need to, you, you cannot use them like concurrently. Try yeah. to use them as a complementary approach. Okay. All right. Um, physician Leong, um, mm. back to Chinese yam. Um, is this to be avoided all types of breast cancer survivors? Um, I am a triple cat negative and my physician advises <laughs> to take Chinese yam, Tang Shen, Wang Qi, regularly to consume. I am now confused as only Chinese yam is the only herb which has different opinions. Yeah, so uh, back down to, if you are triple negative, then it should be all right. Yeah, so uh, because of, of course there's no, what they call the estrogenic receptors, ma, so triple negative is quite all right to take the uh, Chinese yam, which is your San Yao, Tang Shen, Huang Qi. All these are good to strengthen your qi back down to strengthening your chi. Okay, Ken. I've operated on my womb and ovaries away. Uh, what kind of herbs should I take to boost my body back? Mm. Okay, so in this case, is oh, like when we try to boost the body, it's uh, all of a balance of your chi and your blood or even your yin and your yang. So just now what we said, mentioned earlier, which is san yao and huang qi, tang shen, all these are good. In On the therapeutic TCM point of view, okay, then you have your red dates, go qi zi, even some of a bit of chuan xiong and all. So it depends on when are you, when did the operation last stop? If your operation is more than two weeks back, okay, then it's all good to give some uh, herbs that is nourishing the blood but also moving the blood. Okay, okay, uh, how to wash the herb well? I think mentioned <laughs> earlier. <laughs> how to wash the herb well? Not hey, sanitizer. Uh, Please do not use sanitizer. Or <laughs> <laughs> Is there any methods or you know what is considered washing it well? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so usually the soaking it, soaking it is important. Then you can use some of the um, there are some sprays that is very good for like cleansing of like debris and also in the clinic we actually use ETL number nine so that one helps to clear it away but if not you can actually try out see what are there out there on the market lah. so it depends on what you have accessible to just wondering is it like those um vegetable washers is are these mm, are those yes. okay? similar okay. similar yeah. so it's readily in the market as well Okay. Yeah, correct. So try to, actually it's good to use like the vegetable wash that you were saying, okay, for all your food products. Yeah, really to clean away all those debris on it. Mm, okay, great. Um, bird nest is supposed to promote goodness. As cancer patients, some say it cannot be taken as it's not uh, supposed to promote goodness. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that a comment or is that a question? <laughs> <laughs> Rephrase the question. Is bird's nest good for cancer patients? Let's rephrase it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, back down to the body constitution of the person. Yeah, I always I always tell myself, okay, always see the patient before like uh, we can give further. C certain ones are quite common, like Huang Qi, Tang Shen, those, those are general for all. But bird's nest comes back down. If the person has a, ex a lot of yin in the body, very liang, then of course bird's nest will not be that suitable. Lah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bird's nest also have a lot of sugar to be careful of that because sugar content quite high by <laughs> to maintain uh, balance and moderation. Uh, yes. Okay, quick question. Uh, Japanese nagaimo is the same as Chinese yam, is it? Would you know? I think it's slightly different though. I think it's slightly different. Um, similar species but uh, slightly different. So I'm not too sure about the Nagaimo. Okay. And you know, uh, I like to eat it like on its own. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can cordyceps be eaten for cancer patient? Cordyceps. Okay, cordyceps is good for nourishing, but it, because it's very strong, so you have to see the condition of the patient. So if the patient has yin deficiency and excessive heat, then cordyceps may not be that suitable. Cordyceps, if you be a bit cautious, cordyceps is a proper anti-cancer drug. So in itself, right, uh, high doses of cordyceps have been used to treat cancer alone without any other thing. 
uh, and also very expensive. So Cordyceps actually interfere quite a lot with other medicine. You have to be very careful. Cordyceps is a really proper drug. Yeah. Mm. Okay, um, for the screen questions uh, on the chat box, I will temporarily put it on hold. I think there are people who want to speak um, via the mic. Um, so, um, Florence, I think you yes. have some questions, right? Yes, yes, yes. I have two questions to ask. Uh. I want to know, uh, you know, uh, because I have uh, shoulder pain and uh, last week I went for ultrasound, so there is a tear. So I want to know whether uh, can I take TCM uh, prescription herbs la, in order to heal it? Is it, is it possible? Okay. Do you have any other underlying body uh, conditions? Other than that? I, I, I am a, I am a cancer survivor la, okay? Ah, okay. Ah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, then the, yeah. Yeah, there are some herbs, uh, but the, with regards to shoulder and muscular issues, usually is be, uh, you should visit a TCM physician to assess it will be better la. Yeah, there's no like a uh, general therapeutic herbs that is good for uh the repair of the tear. I went to your clinic. And, uh, and I do acupuncture for uh, a few times already, yeah. But then I, uh, but the, the, the physician told me, say, maybe you should go for x-ray or something like that. Lah. So I went for ultrasound. Ah. Ultrasound can see better. So after ultrasound, they shows that I have a, a tear, a tear over at my shoulder part. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what should I do. Should I go for dry some uh, herbs or not? It heals or not? Kill me or not? Uh, yeah, then, you, then, then I'm not sure which physician you went to, but the... Uh, like you can let, let me know. Katong area. Katong area. Okay. Can, can, can. I will let the physicians know to actually check it back in with you and see what is the more suitable herbs lah that is suitable for you. Okay, yes, friends? Uh, uh, yes, the and the I want to ask, the Pei and Pei and Pei and Huang are they the same? Pei and Huang are they the same? Uh, they are slight different. I if I'm not wrong, Hei Chi is the more wild harvested ones. Yeah. Pei Chi, no? Pei Chi and Huang Chi, you know? There's a difference. Oh, Pei Chi and Pak Chi and Huang Chi. Yes, they are the same thing. They are the same oh, thing. Same, huh? Okay. 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 Thank you. Yes. Esther, as I want to answer your question, that if you have a tear in your ligament in your shoulder, and sometimes it's also caused by frozen shoulder, and this tear is actually quite common. Uh, usually, we recommend anti-inflammatory medicine and also physiotherapy and some rest. Uh. So eventually, okay. it does improve with time. Uh, but a okay. tear that's severe, right? If the tear limits your function, you should see an orthopedic surgeon because the, okay. the tear actually can be repaired. Yeah. yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Justin, please hold on. Uh, let me open up to Judy first. Hi, Judy. Uh, you have a question? Uh, you will need to unmute your mic. Hi, uh, Miss Lin. Uh, I have a question. Uh. Uh, can I talk? Can you hear me? Uh, sorry, you are? I'm Joyce Lin. Okay, okay. Can you can proceed? Yes, okay. Uh, I always follow the Western uh, uh, internet on the uh, probiotic for uh, cancer patients uh, about uh, immunity in the gut. So uh, probiotic in the gut. Uh, so I do my own sauerkraut and my own kimchi, my own uh, kombucha and uh, milk kefir to build the immunity, uh, the probiotic in the gut. So with regards to TCM now, uh, TCM mentioned about no uh, cold food and all this. Um, I just wanted to uh, 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 clarify with uh, uh, physician Leong about Um, Justin, I yeah. um, cannot hear you. The last few words. Okay, I want to uh, clarify with uh, Physician Leong about the uh, all this food considered as cool food because kimchi, sauerkraut, all these are preserved food. Mm. So uh, maybe get her view on that because uh, I'm I am i am eating them. I, I make them and I'm eating them for the probiotic. So uh, mm. I'm also a cancer. Uh, I'm on mm. active cancer chemo treatment now. Yeah, Dr. Mm. Rubin. Mm. Okay, I think it boils down because this, uh, for for this one, if you are doing it on your own and you like what Dr. Chu has said, okay, you don't uh, like uh, preserve them for too long, you eat them within is uh, 
ideal uh, consumption phase, okay, three days, seven days, within the ideal consumption phase is quite all right. Uh, back down to if you are consuming them and you are actually uh, doing well on them, so you can actually uh, complement it with like other warming herbs in your other dishes and all. For example, you are doing steamed fish, correct? So you just throw in more uh, ginger slices and all, kind of to, to warm up back your internal core body system. Lah. Dr. Chu, what do you think uh, of uh, own self-made? Uh, my Korean friend put ginger inside the kimchi, you know. He does that. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, he put it in, in, in it's where he put it, just good. And that puts it, he put it in the fridge, right? So he actually does that. Uh, it tastes good, you know, because he always provides me with kimchi. <laughs> so, I see. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Uh, Physician Leong, uh, uh, mm. according to the uh, fermentation process, uh, the mm. different uh, time frame has different probiotics. <laughs> because when you first uh, ferment it, uh, it's actually, an it's actually uh, aerobic bacteria in there because there are mm. oxygen in it. We put in a vessel mm. that's airtight. So we need to ferment mm. it for at least 30 days where the anaerobic bacteria mm. will come in uh, to get mm. a full spectrum of probiotic. Uh, so that mm. it can be as long as 45 days. Ah, okay. Okay, because um, that one I'm not very familiar, but if you are doing well, like I said, uh, and you do it on your own, making sure it's all clean, then it's quite all right for you. Everything in moderation. Uh, then from the TCM perspective, uh, balance it with warming foods. Lah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, both doctors. Okay, no thank problem. You. Okay. Um, Judy and Grace, do you all still have a question? Because you raised your hand. So, uh, if you have, uh, okay, can you can? Hi, maybe, uh, hi. Uh, this is Grace. Okay. I asked I asked a question about bird nest because bird nest supposed to be fu, fu in the uh, in Chinese fu fu sen, but because we have cancer and uh, we are not supposed to eat. The pool, you know, that, that kind of thing. That's, that's why I raised the questions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. okay, so the nourishing, like I said, back down to what is your base body constitution, okay, and also back down to how much are you taking and consuming it. So there's always a balance. Okay, if you already do have it, okay, and like um, in terms of sugar content, in terms of your body constitution is good for, it's okay to take bird nest, then you can take it also back down lah, in moderation lah. You do it yourself or you buy the instant? Uh, instant lah. Instant, instant then is uh, usually I don't really recommend it because yeah. that one really, like what Dr. Chu has said, there's a lot of sugar in the makings of it yeah if and you can then you buy the raw one and then double boil it that one might be better and and sometimes the the business nowadays they, are, they cultivate it they put a lot of uh, bleach as well to bleach it a bit more whiter because the uh, original business is a bit dirty so be be careful that you know be ingesting uh, some of the bleach yeah, mm. yeah. okay and the bottom one is very low content of business very low <laughs> yeah yeah, so if you if you want it, that there's always other like uh, slightly cheaper ways like back down to your uh, Dang Shen and Huang Qi. Oh, Dr. Chu, do you know that Dang Shen is also known as poor man's ginseng? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Chinese are poor. <laughs> la. The rich one is Korean and Korean are very, very rich because the ginseng all the good grade all there. <laughs> okay. I have a question. You are? Kelly. Okay. Hi, Dr. Chu. Okay. Hi. Okay, uh, Physician Leong, I have a question. Um, I'm always curious. So I'm triple mm. negative survivor for 24 mm. years. Um, oh, so thank you. Throughout, I've been uh, on and off on TCM. So, of course, mm. then when I see the TCM, it was all those herbs, like what Dr. Chu, mm. 24, uh, 45 minutes, two times, blah, blah, blah. So I just find mm. too cumbersome. So of course, nowadays I see that they, they give in powder form. So I'm mm. curious how effective, okay, uh, taking that all the TCMs that we're going to see are very good, reputable, can mm. uh, 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 sort of help cancer patients in terms of maintenance. So what are the difference? I mean, from the, you do yourself and the powder form, is there any difference in terms of benefits and effectiveness? Okay, I 
this one is uh, I cannot say for all, okay, because it boils back down to what is the formula that they have used and for for the particular patient. So, uh, in terms of what we have been doing in both Singapore as well as back in China, okay, just before I left, the the powder use of TCM herbs is actually on the increase because it is actually uh, easier simplified. So, there is a lot of patients may not be brewing the herbs properly. Like, yeah. there are certain herbs that maybe need to, what we call, um, first, uh, boil it first before you add other herbs. There are some herbs that need to add in later. If you do, uh, if you are able to catch, okay, what is the right procedure, then the brew herbs will be good for you. If you cannot catch the right procedure, then usually you can go for the powder herbs for um, ease of convenience so that there is also... Uh, what we call uh, what's that called? Um, the you you can follow the treatment procedure, a sustainability lah of your treatment procedure. Yes, so mm. my, I I always hesitated because brew. I mean the powdered form is already there, right? So how in terms of process, how do they do it? I mean, okay, maybe you can take this offline. So I'm just curious. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Mm. That yeah, yeah. 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 So for Singapore, what I understand is. All of the most okay, most of the suppliers are coming from Taiwan, so they have like regulated, uh, like back, uh, factories and all to before they come in, and they are also tested, uh, randomly by HSA on like the heavy metal toxicity and all. So usually, uh, is uh quite clear, quite good in terms of the quality and all. So it depends on back down to how your physician actually um, come up with the most suitable formula for you. Lah. Okay. Right. All right. You. Okay. Uh, last question uh, from um, Judy. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So sorry. My mic was mute just now. It's okay. All right. I uh, just want to recap on what Dr. Chu has explained just now. Someone asked about is Cordycep is good for cancer patient or not, right? And his reply saying that uh, we have to be very careful because uh, it's very strong. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Cordycep is also anti-cancer. So I thought anti-cancer means it's good for cancer patient, right? So why do we need to be uh, more cautious? Can Dr. Chu elaborate more about this? Okay, Cordycep has been used right, uh, when in high concentration to treat cancer. But when you look at the lower concentration and concurrent with chemotherapy, then, then there's a uh, uh, drug and drug interaction. So, so you have to be careful that this drug and drug interaction right, uh, has sometimes uh, caused a lot of toxicity and additional. Um, so Cordycep has been known, just like Lingzi, you know, in, there's a different amount. So a lot of people got, so the Lingzi you buy, right, uh, let's say from GNC, is a different quality of Lingzi you get from TCM. And even you see the TCM physician, there's a different doses and different kind of Lingzi, and then they have a Yuan Zi. There are a lot of different things. So actually, uh, we shouldn't look at the content as a simple as that. Cordyceps are many, many different doses. There are many different grading as well. Some of the good grade is very, uh, not say toxic, effective, but also uh, you try to kill cancer, of course the effect will also will be higher even in the side effect. And they're very expensive. Some cordyceps are really mixed with a lot of other things. They say they sell cordyceps, but actually it's very low grade cordyceps and may not work at all. Um, so I say that there they are a different, different spectrum. Uh, so, so, no, so if you buy a cordyceps from the shop yourself, I believe that if you buy it cheaply, it will be a low quality and, and may not be a true cordyceps. A true cordyceps, the real Tong Tong Chao can sell for thousands of dollars. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, to, to play safe, does it mean that for a cancer, cancer patient that's having their chemo treatment, uh, it's best to avoid cordyceps? Uh, avoid it. That, that's my wife, is to avoid it. Yeah. Okay. So they can take it as... Uh, probably after the post-treatment. Uh. Yes, in a low moderate amount, but go for high concentration. If, if let's say the cancer becomes stage four, there's no other mm. Western medicine treatment. So you really have to do a high dose because there's nothing to lose really. Because you mm. either do something or you know the cancer is going out of control. Then then a high dose cortisep has been tried and used before. Uh, and also sometimes they use high dose of Ling Zi, try to address and kill and hold the cancer. And this no longer considered supplement, it's actually a treatment. 
I see. So, uh, for example, like uh, I'm having a, a chemo treatment now. So, uh, I have I'm doing doing it a weekly basis. So yeah. every two weeks I will have a one week rest. Yeah. So during this one week rest, right? Uh, can I actually try the Lingzi or or Cordyceps at a good grade one? Probably go yeah. for Lingzi yeah. that kind. Personally, I would not, but uh, let's say, ask TCM physician what will you advise because <laughs> you, eventually you're going to ask the patient to take or not, right? Because most of the time, right, the, the patient will lie to us and say, I'm not taking anything. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm being okay. honest with my uh, oncologist. Because the doctor was confirmed, will say no. I tell you, Western doctor will say no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the the key thing is if you are on, if you are on um, yeah. chemotherapy and all, always check in with uh, TCM vision. Don't, that means, what as what Dr. Chu said, don't buy over the counter. Go mm. to the TCM physician. He will see, he or she will see your symptoms and all, check against the medication you're taking before he tells you whether you should take it or not. Because if you buy over the counter, usually people are like, oh yeah, yeah, Tong Chong Chao is very good, Ling Zi is very good. Yeah, but always see someone who is, has experience, and then they were like, okay, um, decide what is the next course of approach for you. Because the process will be very different. Your amount of grams, right, 6 gram, 10 gram, 20 gram, and the mixture of different. So most of the time, they won't just give you Ling Zi alone, you know. There are other herbs mixed to it. Because to tell the right, there are other things. Because chemo, they will counteract the effect of the chemotherapy. So there are multiple herbs. So not just so simple as cordyceps alone or Ling Zi alone. The other things that are more commonly used than these two. Yeah. So, uh, so can, so if a person didn't go for radio or chemo, can they take a uh, count set or Ling Zi or not? Because my dad got uh, kidney cancer and the cancer is back to the blood stream already. He's 87 years old. He doesn't want to go for operation. So I thought buy Ling Zi for him to eat. Is it advisable? My advice is go and see a TCM and see what the TCM do. I think it's more important to get a proper diagnosis. I tell you, if you buy Ling Zi alone, you do not know the, number one, do not know the grade, do not know much of the dosage, and you may have to take an excessive amount to, to address the, the, the cancer itself. Because a normal Ling Zi over-the-counter is a supplement dose. It will, not be, it will not be strong enough. Oh, okay. So it's better to see the TCM first before yes. the purchase. Huh? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. okay thank you. One last question from the screen, um, the chat box will be, I am in remission for five years already, but yet my palm and fingers and base of the feet is still stiff and numb. What can I do to help this chemo after effects? Any TCM suggestions? Mm, this one usually we'll have to see. Okay, uh, you can do a combination okay, of uh, acupuncture and as well as, uh, what's this called, Twina together to help to improve the circulation around the area. That could be your primary with, uh, depending on whether you want to add in some herbs and all. So oh, often TCM give you that, mm, I would say, a bit of flexibility in that you can choose for non-oral approach. But what about Dr. Chu? Do you have any recommendation? So, so the chemotherapy induces uh, neuropathy, uh, the nerve damage. Uh, uh, sometimes the uh, drugs like oxaliplatin and, and Paxil, which is the two most common drugs. Usually with time, it just gets better, but it takes a few months to get better. Uh, and it's a challenge that we still struggle with that because there's not much effective treatment apart from time for heal. And sometimes it will not go back to 100% uh, uh, normal. Uh, and that's why sometimes I think TCM may have a role because I think in Western medicine, there's not many effective treatment for this neuropathy except to wait for time to heal itself. It does get better on its own slowly. And sometimes I give people vitamin B complex because vitamin B actually helps with the nerve regeneration. Um, so mm -hmm. a lot of people take neurobion and things like that. And sometimes if the, if the nerve has causing pain, it, it gives some, some neurontin to help with the, with the, with the nerve pain. Uh, so it's symptoms management only. Yeah, I think the, especially with numbness, right, uh, even though we didn't cover today, um, some patients, okay, having said that they must be, um, a, the, the person must be suitable for it. Lah. Sometimes bloodletting at the tips of your fingers may help to improve circulation to the area. But back down to how the TCM physician sees the patient. Lah. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, I think one last question we will and we will close Q&A, all right? Um, Yvonne, I saw that you raised up your hand. Yeah, can we do during chemo, right? Uh, can we do bakwan or wasa, all those things? Okay, uh, is done now, but okay, ask his decision. Okay, Philip, okay, depends on where, where is the, the thing because okay, Pakwan and Kwasha, right? That is uh, is how do I say it's very uh, it's good to improve circulation, okay, it's good to improve circulation, but it, it can be quite strong if the person doesn't do it, and then when you have poor P, right, because of you use too much strength and all, it might really affect the body because when if you have an, if you have a, because of your kwasha, then you do it too strong and then because of that leading to open wound, there's a risk of infection. So you really have to have to see the patients. If the patient is strong, okay, nice and strong and doing uh, uh, radio or doing chemo, hey, okay, quite, quite strong to clear. These two methods might be good to clear out the heat. Um, so back down to the person uh, and get an uh, experienced therapist to do for you. So, so uh, everything uh, over, yeah. Once we're clear from CA, it's safe to do kwasa and pakwan. But on the during chemotherapy, right, your, your platelets may be low, you know, because one of the chemotherapy effect, you reduce your white count and also your platelets. Mm -hmm. Now, if your platelets is low, your CSL cell is low, right, if you have quasa and, 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 you know, and your, your blue side will be even more boost because you have a bleeding risk, you know. So, so you'll be very badly, sometimes, you know, you take blood tests, those on chemotherapy, you know, do blood tests also, you see your blood vessels, but you've got also bleed and big bruise there. So imagine you want to boost the whole back, you know, and boost, you know, it's, it's quite, quite uh, dangerous, lah, I would say that. Yeah. Just be careful when mm. chemotherapy, don't, don't do, I think after yeah. treatment has finished. After post-treatment? Post-treatment, mm. don't, post don't treatment. do treatment. Post treatment. Mm. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, uh, we, shall we end the Q&A here? <laughs> <In> <laughs> two hours. Sorry? In two hours. <laughs> the, the questions keep flowing in. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of people have burning questions. Uh, but I think all this can be done and addressed with your physicians as well. So, mm. so uh, I think um, if um, you all have uh, further questions like regards to your own body, uh, please visit uh, TCM and they can advise accordingly also. Okay? So, um, uh, yes? if you use TCM, it's very important to let your doctor know that you're seeing TCM. Yes, yes. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll end here. Um, hold on, uh, let me screen. Oh. You want to change the form to feedback? Ah, yes, please. <laughs> Those who have done your feedback form, please do that. I, I don't get paid anyway, but it's for their, their benefit. <laughs> So you can put whatever you want inside the feedback form. <laughs> Tell it's the real for story. everyone's benefit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, I'm sure everyone have a great takeaway from today's sharing. Uh, it's two hours. It's the longest that we have so far. Wonderful. Uh, so um, before you all leave, um, as mentioned, please help to fill out the feedback form for this session. Uh, you may go to the link uh, as posted that uh, on the chat box or use the QR code scanner on your phone to access directly, okay? So let me post uh, the feedback form on the chat box now so that you can just click also. Okay, so it's on the chat box already. Uh, you can just click and then it will link you directly to the feedback form. Okay, so um, thank you so much for all of your time for being such great audience and taking part so actively. Um, and thank you, Dr. Chu and Physician Leong. Uh, it's really a wonderful session. So I hope that I can see all of you all for the next uh, upcoming programs as well, okay? So goodbye and take care. Have a very good week ahead. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Chu. Thank, thank you. you.